Thank you for staying late to join me today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed your first day as much as I have. It's been a fantastic event. Um, I'd like to thank the AWE and the, the team for setting up such a wonderful day. I've seen fantastic briefings. Um, it's been quite the, the experience just in the first day. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about um, what we're seeing for Lockheed Martin Space. Um, I'm the principal investigator for space, and I'm also a principal investigator at the corporate level across our four business areas. Um, this is what we're working on at the moment. This is Orion. Uh, for context, um, Orion will fly a thousand times farther from Earth than the International Space Station. So it's a much deeper space uh, mission. Um, Orion uh, is built on information learned from the last 50 years of activity with uh, NASA's uh, missions. Um, this is Orion on the production floor. So uh, if you see the cable harnessing, um, there's almost 60,000 fasteners that keep cable harnessing in place. For those of you who model, if you take out all of the model except for the cable harness fasteners, you can still see what the structure is. It just looks like a pixelated version. So that gives a little bit of context on how many fasteners are installed on Orion. Um, this is the four bay cover that protects the, the crew module. Um, it's jettisoned when they are returning to Earth when they're at about 23,000 feet. Um, this is a very important structure. You'll see uh, in a moment what we're doing with AR um, with these different uh, components and subsystems. So this is a uh, launch. Uh, Orion is launched on the uh, Space Launch System, which is taller than the Statue of Liberty. Um, the fuel for the, the abort system for uh, Orion uh, burns at about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to boil steel. Um, if they do have an abort mission, uh, the abort takes the astronauts away from this environment. Um, it goes at, from about zero to 500 miles per hour in about two seconds. Okay. Um, this is the spacecraft adapter jettison panel that uh, protects the, the service module components. Um, you'll see a little bit more about this and what we're doing with uh, cable harness fasteners in just a moment. And this is um, Orion where we want it to be. Um, happily flying through space at about uh, almost 25,000 miles per hour. Um, it can house four astronauts. It can orbit the moon autonomously for six months while the crew is on the lunar surface and then get the crew back to Earth safe, safely. Whoops, not sure what happened there. Okay, um, this next slide is the heat shield. The heat shield is very critical. Um, I'll give you a moment to read this statement. It's kind of uh, interesting to me. So 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit is about half the temperature of the surface of the sun. Okay. And 25,000 miles per hour. At 25,000 miles per hour, you could travel from LA to New York in six minutes. So I did not author this statement. This is a statement from the program. The heat shield withstands temps of 5,200 degrees Fahrenheit to keep astronauts safe and comfortable upon re-entry at 24,700 miles per hour. I'm not sure who defined comfortable, but that wasn't me. Um, I find that interesting that our astronauts would be comfortable at 25,000 miles per hour, but uh, that tells you something about our astronauts. So how are we using AR in these environments, in the production environments for Orion? Um, these activities started back in 2017. Um, you may have seen some of this information in the past. We used augmented reality in the early stages for drilling and for uh, torque applications, and we saw about a 35 to 50% touch labor reduction. Now, our goal 
was to reduce what we call information overhead, which is the time to get to the activity. And in those cases, um, you can calculate it at about 98% touch labor reduction. But if you look across the entire activity, it's about a 35 to 50%. Now, in addition to that, uh, for training, we were taking um, eight-hour activities and completing them in about 45 minutes. That's about an 85% reduction. Um, now we're looking at activities where the question for some activities is whether training is needed at all. Uh, we're starting to use terms like training-free activities. Training-free, um, I think, could be um, very influential in the very near future. Um, for Torque applications, now, I'm a mathematician, and I know that some of you are already looking at this saying there's a 50% touch labor reduction, but a six-week activity is completed in two weeks. Um, that's not a mistake. Um, our technicians were having so much fun, they worked a little bit longer days, and they, uh, on their own choice, and completed the activity in two weeks. Um, we're starting to put numbers on what you would call fun. How do you quantify what happens when technicians have fun or enjoy their work, um, or enjoy their work more? in this case. Um, and then there's also uh, the non-step-based instruction, which um, we often think of work instruction as being step one, step two, step three. Um, we have many activities that do not fall into that category, and so we experimented with ways to represent the data differently so that you could have highlight or spheres that, that are highlighted and labeled that you would select where you could navigate more easily to the information layer that you need in order to do your work. Um, with that activity, we reduced 1,600 hour activity down to about 1,000 hours, which is about a 37% reduction in touch labor. But even with these activities, um, we were looking at ways to incorporate all different types of bleeding edge technologies to advance the state of AR for our production teams. But we also knew that we needed to um, pay attention to where we can see the value even beyond what you see here. And I felt like we were missing some things. I felt like we were um, not paying enough attention to some, what we consider as the simpler use cases. Um, they may not be as attractive at the start, but um, I'll show you a few of these. This is the spacecraft adapter Jetson panel. You see the people standing at the bottom left corner um, as a reference. It's about a 15 by 17 foot panel that's curved. Um, there were some challenges with this activity. The task is simply to mark the locations where these click bonds, which are fasteners for cable harnessing, uh, where they would be placed. And on the right side, you see the technician with a stencil, and he's just drawing the location. Um, normally, it would take several days. Um, they completed this task in about two hours, and I'll show you more of the details on that in a moment. But um, in this environment, we often think that the models will represent exactly what you see in the environment. In this case, that panel is flexible. <laughs> and so um, it's more curved at the top in this case than it is at the bottom because it's the sport arms. So when you're trying to overlay a model onto the structure that's not sitting in the same geometry as it does in the model format, it can be a challenge. Um, we very quickly went back to the drawing board right there in the room and started thinking about ways to solve it. And I'm very happy to say that we were able to come up with a solution to a line through the panel where we could hit 0.1 inch accuracy across all of the fasteners. Um, we did that by breaking it up into sections. But another challenge that you see in this one is that the depth sensors of our AR device had difficulty with the composite. Now the floor is shiny, and the walls are too far out, and the ceiling's too high up. But if you're creative, you can come up with ways to still hit 0.1 inch accuracy. So um, being able to um, work with those environments very quickly is very important. Um, with the numbers that we were seeing in this activity, we wanted to see if it was an outlier, if we um, had just happened upon something in one single case, or if we needed to, uh, we wanted to see if it was real. So the prior activity was in Michoud in Louisiana, 
at one of our facilities. This activity was in Denver where we were looking at a slightly different use case with strain gauges and transducers. Um, the goal is to mark the locations for where those will be installed and to make sure that the strain gauges are clocked correctly in XYZ space. So um, this activity in Colorado came up with similar numbers. Um, it was very beneficial to the teams in terms of touch labor time. And we also found that it was um, very uh, easy or much more straightforward for the quality personnel to put on an AR device and to quickly check to see if strain gauges were clocked correctly for inspection. And we're seeing that across many of these uh, surface object alignment type use cases. And then we wanted to explore it further. So um, less than a month ago, we went down to Kennedy Space Center. Uh, technicians crawl inside the structure. The cable harnessing that you see on the outside, uh, you would also see on the inside. So uh, it has not been installed yet. This is not a picture of what we had in the environment. This is a, a different picture, but it gives a representation of what you would see. Um, they were marking the locations of 358 click bonds. And so um, let me show you how this turned out. So the first activity, when you look at the numbers, it normally takes two technicians, about two shifts, to mark the 309 click bonds across the spacecraft adapter jettison panel. With AR, they took one technician and we completed it in two and a half hours. So that's 93% reduction in touch labor. And this is where we said, oh, we better go see if this is real or not, <laughs> you know, before we go too far. Um, so we wanted to explore um, whether this was an outlier or not. Um, so the next activity normally takes one tech, one shift. Um, we took one tech and we completed this in 45 minutes. If you run the math on that one, it's a 91% reduction in touch labor. So very similar numbers. Um, out at Kennedy Space Center, it normally takes three technicians, eight shifts to mark the 358 click bonds. It's a little bit different process. Um, we took three techs and we completed the task in six hours. So that one is a 91% reduction in touch labor. We're seeing a trend. We're seeing a fantastic trend and it's with a simple use case. So I'd like to encourage people who are looking at the use cases to know the technology, to know the different types of use cases, make the appropriate pairing of the technology with the use case. Know what use cases not to pursue with the technology that you have available to you. That's very important. Many groups will want to employ the technology because they can. But it's important also to know where not to use the technology. Um, go here. Another question we get is, how long does it take? You know, all of this is great, but how long does it take to build the content? You know, a couple of, you know, five years ago, it might have taken us a long, long time to build the content for these types of use cases. But we're using products that allow us to build the content very rapidly. Um, one developer developed the content for all of these, um, and it was developed, you see the numbers here, three hours for the first one, four hours for the second one, um, a little over five and a half hours for the third. And we know ways to optimize this even further. Uh, each one of these still requires model decimation. Um, our models are huge. We have ideas of how to fix the model decimation challenge, but um, about a third of the time for each one of these in the development hours was used on model decimation. So there's definitely optimizations there. Um, I can also say that even though these numbers are good, <laughs> we're always looking for ways to optimize them. So if we were to run these activities again tomorrow, um, we know how to take the middle one and complete it in 15 minutes. We know how to take the one on the right and complete it in three and a half. So there's definitely ways to, to still optimize. Now I wanted to leave enough time for some questions because I know that we've covered quite a bit pretty quickly. Um, I will say that um, you know, we're always working so that what we call someday is closer than what we think. 
but I think it's fair to say that AR is now. There's definitely opportunities to use AR now to benefit your companies and to do fantastic work in that direction. Okay, and I'll open it for questions. Thank <music> you.